Hi you all, welcome to Learn to Sew with Kelly Boss and today we are going to make these quick and easy baby bibs. They make great gifts, really great gifts. And so this is an older bib that I had did like a year or so ago and this one I just made. Now, the fun part about making these bibs, if you happen to have terry cloth um, at your local store or just to have some terry cloth, which is just towel, a, a pretty uh, absorbent towel, or a dish towel. This was a dish towel that I purchased, two separate dish towels because I like the decoration. So you can pick up a dish towel as well. You'll also need some pins or clips. You'll need the pattern download. And if you do not have snaps, no biggie, no biggie at all, Velcro does the trick as well. I will show you how to use the snaps on the back of the bibs so you will get snaps or the velcro let's get started all right so we have our terry cloth here and there's different uh, piles of weight grades to terry cloth so when you are picking it up for a bib just do the hold it test and if it looks like it's you know just right for an infant's neck or a baby's neck or a toddler's neck, then that's the one you want. You don't want to make it too heavy for an infant, so some of the heavy terry uh, may not work for an infant, but may be great for an older child. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold your fabric over and begin using the fold of the fabric. The fold of the fabric is really great. We see this a lot in sewing because it allows you to cut something um, uh, symmetrically and when you open it up, you have one big piece. So we'll fold this over and we'll place the bib pattern onto the, um, the fabric. And you notice that I'm placing the opening of the bib, the neck part, onto the fold. And let me show you what I mean about that. This is actually the part of the bib right here that's on the fold. So when I open it up, I have one complete bib. So what you want to do is you want to either chalk out or pin. And for Terry, I'm just going to go ahead and pin this down just to hold it all in place. Sometimes, you know, if you sew with me or you sew independently, you know, some days you have those moods where you're just like, oh, I'm going to freestyle this. <laughs> and then some days you're like, I think I'm going to need a lot of pins. So you know your mood and where you are for the day <laughs> so you make that choice what's best for you and then we'll cut out and you remember you're sewing you're cutting two pieces the first time and then we're going to move this pattern up or over to another fold to cut it again because that will be our back so we're cutting out the front piece or at least one side you want to come all the way around with it. Now, pay attention here. You do not want to cut this side here because that is the fold we just spoke about. And when you get your pattern, you'll have markings that will tell you, don't cut here, don't cut here. Just take that out and cut the other one right there. Come around that little mini curve. And when I take this out, you'll see that I have the front part of the bib. See that? So now you're going to do the same exact thing on another fold of your fabric. Or you can use the contrast. You could have put a piece of fabric here. You can be as creative as you like. All right, so I've already folded over my um, other piece of my fabric. So I had, this is, I'm working with a lot of remnants and scraps here, so I didn't want you to have to suffer through watching me find a piece. <laughs> so here's a nice piece here. And I'm folding it over, making sure I have two pieces, and then laying my fab my pattern down. Now be careful, you're not leaving this as the, your fold. This is your fold. So you may have to even turn your pattern over. In sewing, sometimes we have to turn our patterns in the opposite direction. So I will place my bib. This is the first bib that I cut out. I'm just going to place that on there because I already know that the, the fibers are going to... Uh, hang on to each other. They're going to grip because it's it's terry cloth. So you can lay something on top of terry and, and it'll stay up there pretty good. So I'll just even this out. 
And then I'm just going to come around and cut out the second piece. Now, for those of you that are cutters, meaning if you are using your vinyl cutters out there, this is actually a really fun time to start adding names. You're, you know, if you embroider, great time to start adding the names. Um, I probably would have hooped this first before I had, uh, before I had cut. So make sure that you hoop first because you will not have, um, you may not have enough even on a four by four frame. So for you that embroider, you know all this stuff that I'm talking about. <laughs> so you may want to hoop first, okay? And then if you are a cutter, a vinyl cutter, um, you know, this is the perfect time. And if you sublimate, uh, if you do printing, make sure that you have the right textile. This is 100% cotton. So those of you that, um, that print fabric, uh, well, you know what needs to happen to cotton in order for it to sublimate. All right. So now we have our two pieces. We're halfway home. You want to take one side of your terry cloth and you want to turn it over to the other side, uh, right side. Well, in this case, terry cloth is a little bit difficult to see its right sides, but for those of you that have that sewing eye, you'll see it. But don't, don't, don't overthink it, okay? Place your right sides together. So just put one on top of each other, just like that. And I would highly suggest you pin or clip at this point. Now, if you're coming around, you see me neatly making sure everything is together because fabric tends to shift and move even during a cut. So I'm just making sure that it's all even. I am going to go ahead and use my clips here. And you do want to leave an opening and an opening so that you can turn. So if you've done other tutorials with me, you'll see that I'm talking about the opening here. And so I'll just put a few clips just to keep everything in place. And when you're sewing, we have some curves here today. So we're going around curves. We're going to take our time. You'll watch me go around. Uh, Terry has a tendency to slightly bunch up or shift. And it's okay because you are in control and you control this fabric. So we'll get through that together. Slow and steady wins the race here. And how I remember for myself, because sometimes I can get really in the groove of sewing and forget to leave an opening, I just take something odd, like a pin or, you know, maybe double clip or something, and I put it in an odd direction so that I remember to stop. Because I can get cruising right around here and seal that thing right up. But when I come to the pin, I know to stop. Now we're just going to go on our machine. We'll start at the beginning of our opening. Come all the way around. Run it all the way. Nice. Stop. Turn it to the other side. This is a great tutorial to learn about curves, deep curves, opening. It's a really great tutorial. So let's get started. All right, now here we are under our machine. I'm going to zoom in and let's get right into our sewing. So here's the bib. And remember I mentioned the pin here and I said, I need to get this out of the way because I'll just talk and sew right through that. So, I have placed my uh, foot, my fabric underneath my foot. I am going to sew over on my uh, 5 8 half inch, my, about my half inch, and about my 5 8 I'm sorry. And don't, if you're not, if you're new to sewing, don't worry about any of that I just said. <laughs> I was talking out loud. If you're new to sewing... Um, you can begin right on the edge of your foot right here. And if you see your markings on your machine, you can move over to your half an inch or five eighth inch of a line. We'll talk about that in another video. Okay, we'll just stay on the edge. How about that? We'll keep it nice and simple. So we'll go nice and easy here. So there we are placed underneath. And let's begin. No need to really back stitch right here. Remember, this is terry cloth, a little bit thicker. Now, notice how I'm slowing down here because I am turning a corner. It's like driving a car. And I'm turning the fabric, stopping and moving my clips. So, underneath here, I'm checking to make sure that the fabric hasn't shifted either because it has a tendency to because it's terry cloth. And when I say shift, it may just, we may have started even, like this and we may end up a little bit shifted over so you, you want to keep checking underneath and making sure 
and hopefully I will miss a little bit <laughs> so that I can use it as an example of the shift. So I'm just going around, take your turn, go around the corner. I'm turning my heel, I'm using my heel like a steering wheel in a car. And I'm just turning the fabric around, taking your time, getting things back suited. And I'm just driving the fabric. Notice I'm just using my one hand, I'm just showing you how the machine will do its job. You just need to do your job, which is drive or guide. That's it. I know I'm coming around a curve again. I see it coming, right? I see that curve approaching right here. So my eyes focus right there. Again. Coming around, slowing it down in that curve, moving that fabric up. And don't worry, if you need to stop and lift your foot and realign everything, you can do that as well, all right? Coming around, coming around another corner. This is a great class for curves. Can't escape them in sewing. <laughs> They're in everything that we do, and the more that you do them, the better that you get. All right, we're coming around. And this is the home stretch. Coming to my last curve right here, which is the bottom part of the boot. Around. And I have to remember to stop right there. How far do you stop? There's the old rule of thumb. I think that I made up. <laughs> What you leave open, you have to close. So, you know, maybe maybe about an inch or two, maybe two or three inches. So now I have my bib all sewn all the way around. I intentionally used purple for this tutorial so that you can see my, my threads. And I'm looking here to see if I let something slip. And here's a good example right here. Um, see how the seam allowance is bigger? See how the seam allowance is longer here and there really isn't any right here. See that? That's because the fabric shifted a little bit. So, and here it is right. Oh, look at there's a great one. It didn't even pick up right there. And so all you would do is, so you want to check these seams. All you're going to do is come back and at your last good stitch, if you've heard me teach this before, at your last good stitch, you'll start here and you'll just come over. So let's go do that. All right, all zoomed in, needles in the fabric. I'm going forward a little bit, and I must back stitch to lock that stitch. And we're coming up to our opening here where the stitch dropped, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm just going to move over a little bit, making sure that I catch everything. Come on back around, and then everything will blend back in again. There it is, and I'll back stitch. And that's how you pick up and clean up a stitch is just something to learn in sewing. So if you noticed here, where's my stitch? So I will have double stitches here now, and no one will ever see that but me and you and the hundreds of me people watching. <laughs> so right here, there's my stitch that fell off, and then I went back and I cleaned that stitch up, and now I have a seam allowance that will stay. The other way to um, always check your seams in sewing before you turn is, so here's the opening that we need to turn. You just want to take your fingers inside of the bib, your pillow, your pant, and you just want to feel around inside and check your own stitches. I'm just running my fingers all the way through and make sure that I don't come up with a hole. And you know, you, you'll end up doing that just by habit. And now we'll just turn everything through to the other side, just like turning a sock to the other side. And we are on the right side of the fabric now. Let's keep turning, taking your time. I didn't go into clipping corners and um, cutting back in this video. Um, one, it, it's not necessary for this bib tutorial, but we will talk about cutting back and clipping corners and why it's important. But, you know, in this bib tutorial, we are thinking of ways to sustain ourselves, to make great gifts. Um, and this is an awesome way to start selling you learn how to make these bibs. I mean, babies, 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 they just keep coming. And so what a great way to start a business. So I'm taking my finger deep in here 
and I'm just trying to poke out the the neck strap right here so that's what I, what you see me working on is pushing that out and I'm just using my fingers no tools no chopsticks not nothing like that this this class just using my finger and pushing everything out just have patience with yourself push it out and you know this will be the perfect time if you are a cutter and you use your uh, cutting machines this is the time that you would start applying your decals now to the front maybe you're putting on the name um, some hearts some ducks whatever it is that you want to do all right look at that home stretch there's the bib and there's that little opening right there so i'm just going to tuck that under if you've been sewing with me you notice we do a lot of tucking under right and we'll put a clip just to hold in place there we go and our bib is pretty much so done you can leave your bib just like this if you wanted to and close that up and put the velcro um, you can top stitch all the way around you can even add bias tape and put a decorative trim around it if you wanted to I'm going to top stitch and I'm gonna keep it in purple because I like the purple and I want to be creative and then I'll show you how to add the velcro and all the snaps so I'm going to go ahead and close up first. I just want to get that out the way, lifting my pressure foot, staying close to the edge of the foot. All right, so I'm really right on that edge right there. And I like to, um, we're closing up. So remember to close that up, we have to make sure we're catching all of the fabric here. So that's our stitch on the inside. So we want to make sure when we're top stitching that that needle is dropping in to close that up if you come too far over it won't close so you know you just want to make sure that's why seam allowance is so important when sewing because it matters all the way through the sewing project all right so I'm gonna lower my needle into my fabric I am using purple very very intentional one so that you can see me see my stitches and two I thought it would make a really nice contrast I'm just taking my time and this is terry cloth it is a little heavy and because we are sewing on the seams we're now sewing four, sewing through the four layers so just take your time and this is also another um, a way to practice your edge stitching there's my purple you know you could have done a zigzag stitch here if you wanted to just have more fun and use your decorative stitches on your machine just take your time, watch what I'm doing here. I'm just taking my time going around, slowing it down, turning. It's like driving a car. I'm going around the rotary right now. And if you're sewing with me and you've never driven a day in your life, <laughs> it's like riding a bicycle. You gotta turn the hand handlebars. And if you've never ridden a bike or driven a car, this is driving school. <laughs> Keep going all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. And this is, this is focus. I, my eyes are really focused um, where this needle is dropping as much as I would like to stop and look at my camera. <laughs> I'm focusing right in here because sewing is focused in order for you to make all this happen. And I'm coming down the home stretch and I'm speeding it up a little bit. And I hope that you were able to see just how I was able to come around those corners. And I took my time, just like you will. I'm, I'm, I, I have to do this the same exact way that I'm teaching you. Coming to the final end, back stitch to lock it, and I'm done. That's it. This is a great, great business to start making baby bibs. Look at that. Purple, purple trim. We'll cut off the loose threads here. Just a couple on the front and the back, right there. That's it. You watched me do it right before your eyes. I didn't do any kind of tricks with the camera. I made the whole entire thing in front of you. You too can do this. A great way to start a business and to sustain yourself. All right, so let's add some uh, Velcro. If you wanted to add Velcro, um, you want to just take your Velcro and cut off the size that you need and then you will place it onto your bib in the direction that it's needed and then you will stitch all the way around. 
take the other side and stitch all the way around. You can also look at my video of the cup sleeve and I go over um, Velcro placement. Let's go over snaps. When I first started using snaps, I was a little intimidated and even a little frustrated with it. it was so many pieces. <laughs> but it's just not that hard. It really is not. But it, it, was, it was a doozy for me, honey. So I'm going to show it to you simplified so that you don't have to have the experience I had. Since I did this in purple, I'm just going to go right ahead and get the purple. And let's zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I think I'll stay right on the terry cloth to make it easy for you. So I have my purple here. So you want the two spike pieces, okay? These are the caps. And I'll go back to the other bib to show you what I'm referring to. Th these pieces. This is what this is right here. These here are those little caps. And then you need a male and female port uh, snap closure. And for the sake of keeping this real simple, you just want two pieces that look different. Oh, I just lost that down in there. Give me a minute. Okay, it's really important to keep those things together because then you'll be looking for the other one and it's in the it's in the green box. <laughs> so that's the one tip I can tell you is keep them organized. So now we have a, uh, let me sure I have a male and female here. I have two females. All right. And I think we have it now. Okay. So now we have a male and female. And how do we know? This is the male. It protrudes out a little bit. This is the female. It's, it's it has a hole that you can snap right into. All right. So these are the two pieces that you need right here. And these are the outer caps. And let's do it. In the kits, if you get a kit, they give you a dowel. I found that this point on the cap is sharp enough. But you want to place and just pierce your fabric. All right. I'm sure there's a time when you definitely will need this dowel because, the, you know, it might be um, just too thick of a fabric. And then there's the hole right there. Can you see that? I've already just pierced it right there. Now I will start with a cap with the pointy end and just place it right in there. And there's the, there's the little point right there. You'll take one of the other caps, the male and or the female cap, the male and or the female cap. They're really teeny and they're slippery. <laughs> so let's start with the male, the one that protrudes out just a tad. And this one here will place right on the back on the other hole. So what it's looking like at this point is the, the, the male part that's protruding out and the cap is on the back. And you need this little handy tool. And right here in the black little spot, the black little yeah, the black little uh, lip here, this is where the flat part will go because that's how you keep, you lay it right inside, just lay it down in there. And then you want to make sure that the, the, the purple part, the male part that we're working with right now is underneath the white one. Now I don't want to keep lifting it, but if, if I lift it up slightly, there it is right there. It's right in there. Okay. And then you just squeeze, give it a little squeeze. Don't overdo it. It goes in. And if it doesn't, you have a chance to do it again. And there it is. It's inside. All right? So cap, female part, cap, male part on opposite ends, and you have a snap. So let's look at it from another view. You can take your machine. Here's the little bowl in here, the cap. That places right in here, just like that. And then the fabric, as it's pierced, goes inside. And then your 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 other piece here, the other cap, goes right in here on the top. So let's do it. All right. So now we have our cap on one side of the bib, but the bib is going to cross over, right? So the other cap is going on the back. So we'll go ahead and we'll just do a little rough measurement here. And we'll place another hole. Just put your dowel right through. Okay. And take your uh, cap. This time it's going face up. 
I mean face uh, well the cap is on the bottom and the, the point is face up because when it snaps it will snap just like that here is the female part right here that will go right on top and you'll know which direction because if you look in here they have little um little grooves right there so you can kind of look at it and see the right and the wrong way it's like when you look at your pair of jeans or pants okay so this is the wrong side and this is the snap side so we're placing it just like that and you put the the bowl side the black side mine's black I'm not sure what color yours may or may not be and you slide it inside and you just make sure everything's nice and even before you clamp make sure everything's in there okay and give it a little squeeze it's the same thing as measure twice cut once because what tends to happen is if you miss it you'll you'll crush the lip of it and you have to do it again so now what you have here is a snap on the top a snap on the bottom and let's listen for a snap and we have a snap that is how you add a snap and then it opens right back up and then it closes and there you have your darling baby bib. Organic, all natural. We made it by hand. We did it together. And this would be too cute as a gift set in different colors. You could put the baby's name, ducks, rattles, and have a really good time. Well, there it is, my friends. As always, it is such a pleasure and fun time sharing sewing space with you. Please check out my other videos and happy sewing. Stay safe, stay well.